Hey you guys, so today we are talking about dupes for high-end makeup products. I think I have around 10 different dupes here for you guys, all of which are dupes for products that are high-end that I use either all the time or in some cases the drugstore version of these products I think actually outperforms the fancy schmancy high-end one. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit subscribe and check the down bar for links to all my social media platforms so we can continue to hang out together. I talk a lot about beauty budgets, consumerism, social media, all that good stuff here. We have a lot of in-depth conversations and I'm always trying to tell you guys ways to save money and still look absolutely amazing. So without any further ado, let's just get started. So the first dupe I have is a dupe for this NARS Sheer Glow Foundation. I would have to say that as of the past year, NARS might be my favorite skin line as far as cosmetics are concerned. I'm consistently using two different NARS concealers. I have like five different, no, that's a lie, three different NARS foundations. Like they're the, the complexion line that I think I have the most of. And this one isn't one I've really featured. By the way, just tanned yesterday, so it is what it is. You know how I be. This one in particular I picked up because I wanted something kind of sheer, glowy, skin light, very fresh, something I could wear when I'm going out into the real world as opposed to on camera. This foundation is gorgeous. It says sheer glow, which gives the impression I think that it is a sheer foundation, but I think what it means is the glow is kind of sheer and really natural looking, but this foundation is a lot more full coverage than I thought it was, to be honest. And an amazing dupe for this product that gives you kind of a similar look to your complexion. It actually lasts a little bit longer than the NARS one is this L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow Foundation. I think I put this in a favorites video, um, the last favorites video that I did, I believe. This foundation is incredible. When it comes to foundation as a whole, I kind of feel like at the drugstore, L'Oreal might, yeah, they might have the market cornered for me. I think they're the drugstore line that I have the most foundations from and their kind of glowy natural skin foundations like the True Match Lumi, the True Match Lumi Cushion, which is amazing. And this one are so beautiful. And I wear this foundation more often than I think any other one that I have. Cause like I said, this is an everyday need to just look really fresh and flawless foundation. It looks like my skin. It's very, very natural looking on the skin. Like you just look like you yourself as a human being has very even, very glowy, very perfected skin. It lasts really, really well, even compared to this one. This one, I have a little bit of more issues coming through like oil breaking up. This one lasts longer on me for some reason. Now, like had I known how similar this one is to this, I might never have picked this up because I had this one for a while before I got this guy. I do love this, like I said, but this one is just as good, if not better in some ways. So the next dupe I have for you are dupes for the Stila Glitter and Glow Metallic Eyeshadows. I've tried to use these so many times on camera and off camera. For the most part, these just don't work on me the way they must work on everyone else. And it's gotta be because I have hooded eyes. So I put this glitter situation all over my lid and then the second I open my eyes, it immediately transfers to my lash line and on my lashes. It falls off onto my cheeks. Like it's just not a good situation. I've tried using a glitter glue. I've tried everything to make these work. But last fall, Pixie sent me these guys. These are called their fairy lights. They're literally the exact same thing. But in my opinion, I like these more. I use these all the time. They're just like the Pixie ones. They're a liquid formula that applies onto your lid to give maximum sparkle and glitz. I can't really tell a difference between these. Honestly, they're exactly the same, except like I said, these perform better on me. They last longer on me. I use them, like I said, literally all the time and they're cheaper. I love Pixie Beauty. I think there's, there's a few Pixie products in this video for drugstore. I don't think you can go wrong with Pixie. I think they're on the higher, price point of drugstore makeup, don't get me wrong, but I think they're worth it. And I think they have incredible products that perform as well, if not better than high-end ones. So yeah, once again, the Pixie Fairy Lights are an amazing dupe for the Stila Glitter and Glow Liquid Eyeshadow. Next is a lipstick. I wear this lipstick all the time. Every time I have worn a red lip in the past month and a half or so, it's been this one. And it's funny to me, because every time I wear it, you guys are like, what is that? And I'm like, it's hot shot again, girl. So 
This is Morphe Hot Shot, and even though it's a particular color, it is a dupe for high-end lipsticks that are this shade that I once was absolutely obsessed with. So for example, the lipstick that got me into this orangey red, and if I had to be honest, I think this lipstick got me into red lipstick in general. This is MAC Lady Danger. As you can tell, it is a very vivid kind of almost like a neon orange color. And I started wearing this back in like 2014. I wore it all the time. Every single time I wore it, people would ask me what it was. Um, the next similar shade that I got really into along that line is Anastasia Beverly Hills Spicy. Same exact thing. It's a warm orangey red color. I got into this one because it's a liquid lipstick and it was lasting on me a lot longer than the original Lady Danger. Then I got this guy, which like I said is Morphe Hot Shot. And to me, it actually <laughs> performs a little bit better than all of the other ones. That's right here. So it's a little bit redder than the other two, but not enough that it makes a huge difference. It still gives me the same effect. And it is considerably cheaper than these other two. I don't know how much MAC lipsticks are anymore, honestly. I wanna say they might be around the $18 mark. Anastasia liquid lipsticks, I think around the same price point. This one's like eight bucks. I literally, literally wear it all the time. I have one more Morphe liquid lipstick. I don't know if I've really ever worn it before, but if, if the rest of their lipstick formula their liquid lipstick formula perform this well I might need to pick up more of them because they're very very reasonably priced they're extremely comfortable to wear on the lips they it's a dope product I know everyone goes wild for Morphe's like palette products but their liquid lipsticks ain't nothing to turn your nose up at if they're anything consistently through the line like this one is so Check it out. This is the Huda Beauty. It's called the Easy Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder. I don't really bake anymore, but when I first got this powder, I used it to bake all the time. And what I like about this one is it's it's kind of like a full coverage loose powder, if that makes any sense. Like when you put this on your under eye area to set your makeup or to bake it in particular, I would never use this all over my face. It's just a little too matte and a little too pigmented to do so. It's definitely not translucent or transparent, but it, it really elevates your under eye concealer game, makes it a little bit more um, opaque, if you will. But what's really crazy about this product is it kind of makes your pores disappear in a super beautiful way. I don't bake that much anymore, like I said, but if I was going to, I would use this or I would use this guy right here. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Setting Powder. I have three different colors of this now. The color selection isn't amazing. Like this one is fair light. It's way too light for me. And the next one up is a little too dark for me. So I do have to mix them together to get the ideal shade. But depending on your skin tone, that might not be the case for you. But this performs very similarly to me as this high end kind of Huda Beauty one. I feel like with this one, it's the same story. I wouldn't use this to set all over my face. I feel like it's a little too matte, a little bit too pigmented, but it does essentially the exact same thing. It gives a really beautiful smooth appearance to the under eye it's not too dry too cakey it's got just enough pigment to it to kind of further intensify your under eye concealer game if you're into baking these two are borderline interchangeable and one thing this product has a leg up on that this one doesn't is the Huda one is so fragrance. Like I've talked about this so many times with her complexion products. They are so heavily fragranced. I don't know who that's for. I don't know why it's happening, but this one doesn't have any fragrance. I don't think, hold on, let me take a sniff. Yeah, it literally doesn't smell like anything. So if you're in the market for a good baking powder and you've had your eye on the Huda Beauty one, Check this one out first, see how you like it. You probably will not have a need for this one if you do so. So the next dupes I have are for the Too Faced Melted Matte Liquid Lipsticks. The Pixie, I think these are called the Matte Last Liquid Lipsticks, are very similar. They have a lot of the same shades. And to me, once again, in some ways, I kind of prefer this formula a little bit better. I definitely prefer the applicator better. It's this kind of pointed little dose fit situation. It makes it very easy to apply this liquid lipstick to the lips without using a lip liner. But the formula on top of that is once again, kind of similar to how I said about the Morphe, it's extremely comfortable. To me, a lot of the times when it comes to what you spend your money on and what you splurge on with your makeup collection or 
your beauty budget or whatever, I feel like you save your money on lip products if you can, because they're one of the things that go bad the fastest in terms of shelf life. Like eyeshadow palettes and bronzers and stuff, you have a lot more leeway with. The only thing you throw away quicker than your lip products is your eye products like eyeliner and mascara. Other places I think you should save your money. These, however, I just think I, I actually prefer over the Too Faced ones. And I do love these Too Faced liquid lipsticks. I just think the Pixi formula, a lot more affordable, a lot better packaging, a lot better applicator. They work just as well, if not better. And like I said, there's a few Pixie products in, in this collection. I think they're one of my favorite lines at the drugstore. So if you haven't checked these Pixie ones out, I definitely recommend it. I have a few dupes for Hourglass products. This is the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer, and this is the Hourglass Luminous, Luminous Bronze Light. Let me make something very clear. These two products are not blindly interchangeable, but the thing that I like about this so much, this is the only bronzer, by the way, I have repurchased more than once. Like I completely ran out of this and had to rebuy a new one. I have never done that with a bronzer. And my favorite blush in the whole world that I have repurchased is actually Drugstore 2, and I'll get there in a second. Anyway, so the Butter Bronzer, I feel like this guy had a moment a couple of years ago, and first of all, I feel like when this came out, everybody was like, oh my God, it smells so good. I hate the way this smells. Like, it smells like suntan lotion, which normally I don't mind too much, but as I'm getting older, I think I just, I don't care for it. It smells like a banana boat, <laughs> like SPF 3, suntan lotion that my mom used to use to lay out on the trampoline with. But anyway, this bronzer, as you can kind of see a little bit in the camera, do you see how it's kind of got a glow to it? The same thing is true with this hourglass bronzer. Like it has a glow to it. It's on a flat matte bronzer. I know for the longest time ever, we've all been bronzing with the mattest of matte. And to me, that's fine. But what I love about a luminous bronzer personally, A, I wear a luminous bronzer whenever I'm going out in the real world, like day to day status. But I rarely, if ever, wear a matte bronzer anymore without mixing it with a luminous bronzer because I feel like it goes on so much smoother, blends out so much better and looks so much more like skin than just using a regular flat matte bronzer by itself. This one is an incredible dupe for that exact kind of a situation. I don't know how well, yeah, you can see it. I've got glitter all over my hand now, sorry. But it's beautiful, like it is so, it's called the butter bronzer for a reason, I would imagine. It just goes on so smooth and it's so, it's just really soft and beautiful. So which one's which, I don't even know. Okay, so this is the hourglass one, this is the butter bronzer. The shades aren't terribly different. The formula doesn't feel ter terribly different once it's actually on the skin. Like I said, they're not exact dupes for each other, but the general concept behind what I like about this product is very present in this one. So the Butter Bronzer from Physicians Formula is a dope dupe for the Hourglass Luminous Bronzers. So this is an Hourglass holiday palette. They come out with these every year. Last year, I bought two of them. There was a pink one that came out and there was this gold one. And this gold one has some blushes in it, as you can tell. And the pink one had some blushes in it also. I didn't have any experience with Hourglass blushes until I picked these palettes up. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I've been wearing this blush for years. Like you could literally go back to, I think I had a favorites video in 2015 where I talked about this blush and it's Milani Luminoso. I wear this blush more than any other blush I have ever owned. It's the only blush I've ever completely run out of and had to replace. And what I love about it is it's just so, it's like glowy and beautiful and it's still got like pigment to it and it looks like skin and it's, it's literally just, I don't know how I remember to see it, but it's right there. It's literally absolutely, absolutely stunning. I'm obsessed with it. And Hourglass blushes, their formula is not crazy different on the skin. Like here's the Hourglass one, here's the Luminoso, Luminoso one. The Luminoso one might have a little bit more of a sheen to it than the Hourglass ones, but 
the effect on the skin is very, very similar. It's a beautiful, glowy, natural, like gorgeous flush to the cheeks. And like I said, once I picked these palettes up and started playing with the Hourglass Blush formula, I was kind of blown away. And not at all surprised because I've said it 143,000 million times. Hourglass is one of my favorite lines. So it would make sense that anything that resembles their approach to a blush would be something I love. And Milani Luminoso is no exception. I honestly haven't tried a lot of the other blushes from this line. Cause once I got this, it was like, I've seen the light. I need nothing else. Um, so I can't tell you any other shades that perform this well. If you're not around my skin tone, I don't know how well this would work on you, but if you have had a good experience with any other Milani um, baked blushes, please leave the information down below, help each other. So last hourglass dupe that I have, this is the, I talk about this highlighter so much, you guys. So this is without a doubt my favorite highlighter I've ever owned. I wear this 80% of the time when I do my makeup. If I got rid of all my other highlighters, it wouldn't be a dramatic statement to say that I could get by with just this one. I'm not a huge highlighter freak like other people are, so you do have to keep that in mind. I'm not as diehard for it. I can't really tell the difference between most of them. But this one, like, there's something about it that is so natural looking on the skin. And natural, I think, is sometimes the last word people wanna hear when they're thinking about highlighting. A lot of people want that like super chrome look on their face. I'm not a fan of it, okay? Let that be known first and foremost. This one just genuinely looks like your own natural, gorgeous skin. And the Hourglass powders are very, very similar. Now, I don't necessarily mean they're highlighters, um, I would say it's more like their face powders are kind of similar. So like, for example, this is an hourglass face powder in the color Dim Light. If you layer this on top of itself and decided to use it like a highlighter, as opposed to a finishing powder, I feel like you kind of get a similar effect to the Catrice Cosmetics one where it doesn't look like a highlighter. It looks like you have really beautiful luminous skin. So this is the Catrice one and both of these are hourglass powders on the top. And I feel like, I'm gonna call it now, if Catrice ever contacted me and they were like, we wanna do a collab with you, I would be like, I wanna make powders like this with you guys. Like I would do an hourglass style powder like this. I would do blushes like this. I would do bronzers like this because I love this formula so much. And you could kind of, you can make this as bold as you wanted it to be. It's so user friendly. It's my favorite. I've said it a hundred times. Sip it at. <laughs> this is the Clinique Lower Lash Mascara, which I've been into for about a year now. I have really teeny tiny itty bitty little lashes. I'm okay enough with my high maintenance self to accept that I need a different lash mascara, different lash mascara. I need a different mascara for my top lashes and my lower lashes. So like, for example, this is my mascara I use on my top lashes. Like there is no way I can take this big brush and get anything popping on my lower lashes because my lower lashes are so little and stubby. And I just love lower lashes. I love the way having like thicker, longer lower lashes can balance out my particular style of eye makeup, which is all in the interest of like brightening and opening and creating like a lot of smoke and lash on the top lash line. So I have to balance it out with the lower lash line. All that being said, I like lower lash mascara. And this is the Clinique one and I love it. It's really, really nice. It has this tiny, tiny little brush, which makes it super easy to get lower lashes popping off. But this is the Pixi Beauty Lower Lash Mascara. And I gotta say, you guys, like, think I prefer this one more. It's a little bit harder for me to come across. Like every time I go to replace it and I go to Target now, it is sold out. So a lot of other people must be into it now too. But look at this brush. This is the skinniest, teeny meaniest little brush you've ever seen. It coats the lower lashes absolutely beautifully. It's got a great formula. It doesn't flake off. I don't think it's waterproof, but I feel like it lasts very, very well on me. I do have to say, I don't think <laughs> these products have crazy different price points. Like I think the Clinique one is maybe 15, $16. And I think the Pixie one's like 12 to 14. So not a huge difference in price point, but hey, save the money where you can, especially when in this case, like I said, I I think the lower lash mascara from Pixi performs a little better than the Clinique one, but I do love them both. Lashes. So these aren't necessarily high end, I don't think you would say, because they're still not that expensive. I've been using Flutter Lashes um, synthetic line since 
20, the very end of 2016, I think was the first time I ordered a pair of flutter lashes in the style intoxicating, which I actually don't have in front of me right now. I don't know why I didn't pull for that. But another lash line that's even cheaper than these that I think are just as beautiful and are just as reusable as the flutter lashes are is this line called Coco Lashes. I've been wearing Coco Lashes since um, 2014, without a doubt. I know it's been at least that long. I buy these in <laughs> bulk. When I make a Coco Lashes order, I go crazy. They have so many styles. Like there is not one lash you could possibly conceive of that they don't have a style that you would like of. And lately, did I have it in front of me? Yes. Lately, my favorite lash of life is this one from Coco Lashes. It's called Eris. I don't think I have an exact flutter lashes dupe for this. And this isn't so much a matter of finding a dupe for a particular lash. It's more like quality of lashes and how they look. Flutter Lashes, their synthetic line is so beautiful because they have like this gorgeous fluttery PC texture to them. They look really beautiful on the eyes. You can reuse them multiple, multiple times without them damaging or getting misshapen or something. Misshapen, is that a word? I don't know. But Coco Lashes are the same way. Like they, look beautiful on the eyes. They have lots of texture. They're very interesting on the eyes and you can wear them over and over and over again. The Eris lashes I'm really into right now because you know how like everybody and their mama always wears wispies, Ardell wispies, and that's like their favorite go-to wispy lash. Those do not look good on me because my eyes are so hooded. So if I wear a lash that's not long enough on my hooded eyes, it just kind of gets lost in my hoods, if that makes sense. And these are still really natural looking, but are long enough to kind of open my eye up the way I want them to. I use these in my bridal tutorial. I use them in my chit chat, get ready with me about makeup shame. I use them. I use these all the time. Like they're beautiful. And I want to say they're like five bucks. So they're even cheaper with Flutter. Flutter, I think are $10. These are five, not a bad gig. I'm just letting you know. All right, guys, that is it for me here on this video, all about my favorite dupes for my favorite high-end products. I don't know what I'm calling this. You get the gist. I hope you are having an amazing day. Make sure you check the down bar for links to all my social media platforms. Subscribe if you are not, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.